Thanks for joining um, us, Coach. Make some yeah. opening statements if you'd like. Thanks. And you know, I think after a little bit of a rough start, first quarter, probably not our best basketball, maybe even the whole first half, but uh, the way the guys kind of came together and started playing more like uh, we're used to seeing on both ends of the court, uh, different guys all up and down the roster contributing. So uh, it's a good win. You know, it's exciting for us to play in Paris in front of a great crowd, great arena. Um, you know, really a great week for the Milwaukee Bucks organization. So really, really appreciate everybody and your hospitality and your kindness. Um, it was a great week for us. Thank you, Coach. We'll take our first question. Uh, yeah, this one first. Sorry, just here uh, with the glasses. Go ahead, Davide. Yeah, uh, Coach, Davide Canellato, La Gazzetta dello Sport Italy. It's her uh, 40th uh, win of the season. What do you think makes the Bucks the best team in the league? It's the what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What do you think makes the Bucks the best team in the league? Well, I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of great players on our roster. Um, John Horst in the front office has done an amazing job of putting together a great roster. Um, obviously, at the top of it, Giannis and Chris are very special. But I think the way they're connected and the way they play defensively, um, you know, we want to hang our hat. We want that to be our identity. So we feel like we can be a very, very good defensive team. And offensively, um, you know, play with great spacing, great pace, play unselfishly. And, um, let these guys' talent hopefully shine. Thank you, Coach. I think that, that group that closed the third quarter really kind of changed the face of the game. Yeah, a lot. I mean, it was, um, you know, I think it, it wasn't, we couldn't get going for a lot of the game, and it's a credit to Charlotte. You know, they're well coached. They, they play hard. They're tough. Uh, but that, that group at the end of the third quarter, which sometimes they've done it at the end of the first quarters, but tonight it was the end of the third quarter, really got us going, I think kind of got us back to our identity, um, particularly offensively. Um, I thought that was huge. Next question on our right-hand side. But I know that coaches love to look at 30,000-foot questions and prognosticate, but can you envision a world where what the NBA is trying to do, obviously playing more games overseas and growing the game, that this becomes more of a regular thing and it gets incorporated into the season more so than it is now as a one-off? Yeah, what's that answer? That's like above my pay grade. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I think all the coaches and players, we put all our faith in, in, the, in, the, in the NBA offices and Adam Silver and what he's done to grow our sport and expand it and bring it to France this year um, for this game. And, um, and I think, you know, managing our schedule before and after the game, um, the travel here, the NBA does everything they can, I think, to... Um, you know, make sure your team is well taken care of and then also put on a, you know, hopefully a great game and a great opportunity for fans all over the world to keep, you know, enjoying our sport. So I'm sure the league will continue to do it, but uh, that's Adam's, I'm sure, uh, territory. Uh, next question on our left-hand side. Just a reminder, say your name and outlet name, please. All right, my name is Tom Beckmann from Cologne, Germany. And Coach, Kyle Korver called it a bit sloppy, the game. As a spectator, uh, spectator you looked like... Your team struggles sometimes. Is there a special wording or like the moment when you say to them, hey, come on guys, let's get it going. Uh, you need that win. Uh, you know, I mean, I think collectively, you know, at halftime, uh, you know, both players, coaches, we felt like we weren't playing ourselves. We were, um, you know, sloppy among other things. And, you know, I thought the third quarter, um, Bled and a few other guys set a little bit of the tone at the very beginning of the third quarter. Uh, but then they were able to kind of take it back up to, you know, eight or nine. And, uh, and then that, that group, the George Hill and Pat Connington, I thought Connington was great off the bench and Corver and um, playing Giannis is kind of the only big. Um, you know, that group at the end of the quarter kind of figured it out. Next question on the left-hand side as well. Hey, Coach, uh, Len World, Open Court Basketball. Um, you said, you, like, you obviously had a slow start to the game, as you mentioned. Um, do you think it correlates with the time difference or you think it's an invalid excuse since the Hornets face the same problem? Yeah, no, I mean, there's no doubt. We both, uh, you know, are, are dealing with the same circumstances and I think it's always smart to give your opponent credit. I thought their defense was good. Um, you know, we didn't move the ball and move people the way you need to um, with how they were guarding us. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it was a, a lack of, you know, adjustment to the time or anything like that. You know, we've had some halves. We've had some games where we haven't been our best. And, and usually your opponent's part of the reason. I thought Charlotte was great tonight. Thanks, Coach. Just a reminder to raise your hand if you would like to ask a question. 
We'll go back to the front, front second row here. Thanks for your patience, Coach. Uh, coach, this is a bit off topic, hope you don't mind. Um, I'm writing a story about Pops coaching tree. Uh, so you're obviously part of it. A couple big branches tonight. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think it makes uh, Greg Popovich, uh, you know, a mentor for many coaches around the league? Well, you know, there's so many things that you take from uh, working for, you know, the San Antonio Spurs organization and Greg Popovich and being around their great players. Um, you know, his competitiveness and just being all about winning as a coach. If, if everything you do is to help your team win, that's usually a great place to start does an amazing job of connecting with his players. And then I think, you know, the final thing that I would just say is figuring out what's important and not important to share with either your players, your coaches, in meetings. Um, just an incredible ability to sift through what is unimportant and what, you know, we shouldn't, um, you know, spend time on and, and then what we should focus on. Um, very special that way. Thanks, Coach. Oh, we've got another question here. We'll take this last question, please. My name is Liliane from French Paper L'Equipe. Uh, your team is on a winning streak right now. You're the leader of the NBA. Uh, can you tell us how difficult or not is it to keep this team going, to keep the fire and the player focused? Because victory sometimes is something that pushes people to be a, a little more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think the, the, you, the words we've used with our group is just the, the focus and the purpose of this team has been, um, you know, very good. And so each day in practice, they bring a focus and they bring a purpose. Each game, they do the same thing. Um, obviously, there was a lot of success in year one, or at least the coaching staff joining this group of players. And, but we feel like there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of areas where we can improve. And um, you know, we're all excited about the journey, um, not just the rest of the season, but of, of course, obviously the playoffs. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot, coach.